there are tens of thousands of fixed rate mortgages set to renew. And this video is a serious warning for those mortgage holders who are about to experience a significant payment shock. And even though the warning is simple, it is really just to be prepared. Most people are not going to heed the advice in this video. And there is some very important information at the end that is going to save you potentially tens of thousands of dollars, but only if you follow this advice. And to be clear, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of Canadians leading up to the pandemic in 2020 that had they followed the advice I'm going to give at the end of this video, they would have been able to save tens of thousands of dollars when interest rates went down rather than facing the payment shock that they are about to face when their mortgages come up for renewal. But before we get into all those details, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. And if you are one of those people who wants to thrive financially, then this is the place for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to discuss what is going to happen as mortgage payments start to reset. And I'm gonna give you a couple of options for how to mitigate the serious issue that is going to be increasing mortgage payments. And while these suggestions are not ideal, they will be able to help you mitigate those higher payments if you are feeling the pinch. And like I said, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a really important piece of advice with respect to how to set up a new fixed rate mortgage that could save you tens of thousands of dollars depending on how things go with interest rates down the road. But here's a scary thing, 51% of Canadians, according to a recent survey, are suggesting that they are scared of what is going to happen when their payments come up for renewal. So let's start by looking at the realities of what would happen for a mortgage that is about to come up for renewal. Let's start by looking at a pre-average mortgage. Now I know for some markets, this is going to seem like a very small mortgage compared to other markets, but an average mortgage in Canada right now is about $450,000, at least one that's been had in the last five years. We're also going to assume that the old rate was about 2.99% or less because most people who got a mortgage in the last five years got it for under 3%, somewhere under 3%, but the highest of those rates are probably in that 3% range. So this will apply pretty much to most people. So then using the mortgage amount of $450,000 and the rate of 2.99% and a 25 year amortization, which is pretty standard, especially if you're getting an insured mortgage, we're gonna have a payment of 2127. That's what most people who got a mortgage of about $450,000 would be paying for the last five years. Now here's where it gets really scary because these mortgages that are coming up for renewal, these mortgages are going to have a significant payment increase. And the payment increase is going to look like this. The new mortgage amount, so we're gonna assume that some mortgage got paid off in the last five years, it's gonna be $384,000 with 20 years left. The new rate is gonna go up to about 5.44%, which is going to give a new payment of $2,619. So about $500 more, than what the original payment was. So that's gonna be a pretty big payment shock to those people who had fixed rate mortgages. Now, if you had a variable rate mortgage with an adjusting payment, you don't have to worry about any of this, but for those people who have those five-year fixed, there's this pay big payment shock coming over the next one to three years, and you're going to have to deal with it. So the question is, how do we deal with it? What can we do to mitigate this problem? And again, you gotta wait till the end of the video because the most important advice is at the end of the video with respect to how to prepare your mortgage going forward. But there's a couple of options here that we've put together for you. So what we wanna do here is we wanna try to mitigate for that difference in payment of $491. And there's a couple of things we could do. Now, both of these things rely on the fact that you've had an increase of equity in your property and you've got at least 20% equity. Now, for most people in Canada, if you bought five years ago, that should absolutely be the case. So we're gonna assume that you can do a little refinancing, a little bit of rejigging because you've got the equity in your property to do so. So the first thing we wanna look at is option one, which is going to be extending the amortization out to 30 years. This is going to be the single best way to mitigate your payment. Now, you have to keep in mind that you're gonna pay significantly more interest if you do this. So this is just a worst case scenario if you absolutely have to mitigate the payment issue that you're about to face. So if you were to extend the amortization out to 30 years, you end up with a new payment of $2,145, which is pretty close to your original payment. So if this is all just about mitigating payment, then absolutely, Absolutely, this is a good way to go, but keep in mind that you're taking not just one step back, but two steps back when it comes to the amount of time that's going to take you to pay off your mortgage. So this is not an ideal option, but it is an option. 
Now, the second option isn't any better. It does mitigate that higher payment, but it has a very similar issue when it comes to the amount of time it's going to take to pay off your mortgage. And that option is to take out a line of credit. So in this case, we're gonna assume that you go with a line of credit to 65% loan to value. The reason why 65% is because that's the maximum line of credit amount that you can get. And the nice thing about lines of credit is they have interest only payments. Now the interest rate is significantly higher. So again, you're gonna end up paying way more to the bank, but you can reduce your payments quite significantly by taking advantage of a line of credit option. So in this case, we're gonna assume a line of credit of $234,000. We're gonna assume a new mortgage amount of 150. That brings you back up to that 384,000 that you have left. And the line of credit payment ends up being $1,264. The new mortgage payment ends up being 1,021 and your total payment ends up being $2,285, which is just about $150 more than what your previous payment would have been. So these are all good options with respect to payment sensitivity. Again, this isn't an option that you wanna take if you don't have to. The best move forward is obviously to continue with your payments, just eat the higher payment and try to continue on, maybe adjust lifestyle a little bit. That is the absolute best option in the long run, especially as wages start to increase. But these are two good options if payments are a huge issue for you. Now, at the beginning of this video, I promised you that I would give you one piece of advice that could save you tens of thousands of dollars. Now, we aren't gonna get into adjustable versus variable rate payments. I'm gonna link to a video on exactly why we took an adjustable rate payment this summer when we got a brand new mortgage at the very end here. But I'm just gonna assume that anybody who was a fixed rate borrower five years ago is going to continue to be a fixed rate borrower going forward. I'm not saying that's necessarily what you should be doing, but let's make that assumption. And there's one piece of advice in this entire video. In fact, there's one piece of advice that I give pretty much every client that we have. And that's if you are going to take a five-year fixed mortgage, there's one piece of advice that I can give you that will potentially save you tens of thousands of dollars somewhere down the road. And this piece of advice is something that a lot of people didn't take leading up to the pandemic. And they were the same people that found themselves not being able to refinance into lower interest rates when interest rates went down. Because if you look at all the data and all the suggestions that a recession is coming in 2023, well, that indicates that we're probably going to see interest rates come down at some point. And if you don't set up your mortgage at renewal right now, properly, you won't be able to take advantage of lower rates. And by the way, 51% of people don't even realize that you can shop your mortgage at renewal. And if you aren't shopping your mortgage at renewal and looking at different lenders, you're absolutely out of your mind because the single most important thing you can do if you're renewing a five-year fixed mortgage this year, next year, the following year, is switch your five-year fixed mortgage from a big bank to a mortgage lender that specializes in mortgages only. That is places like CMLS, that is places like MCAP, that is places like First National. And the reason why is simple. They don't have discounts on their mortgages. They don't notate the discounts when you go to get a five-year fixed mortgage from them, which makes their interest rate differentials significantly lower than it would be at a big bank. And if your interest rate differential is lower than the big banks, that means you have a smaller penalty. And if you have a smaller penalty and interest rates go down, you can look at refinancing into a lower interest rate, getting a significantly lower payment if interest rates do find themselves trending down. And by the way, I'm not just talking about five-year fixed mortgage rates. I'm talking about two, three, and four-year mortgage rates, which will almost certainly go down over the next two to three years. You can take advantage of those if you set up your mortgage with a non-bank lender. And I'm not saying this because I'm a broker and I specialize in non-bank lenders. I'm saying this because those non-bank lenders actually have to have better mortgages than the big banks. If they didn't, they wouldn't be able to compete in the number one place that those lenders compete is on their lower payout penalties. So don't just re-sign with your big bank. Make sure your mortgage is set up properly. Make sure it's set up with a non-bank lender so that you can take advantage of lower rates when they come because they will with certainty come at some point. So again, if you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button and I'm gonna to link to the video on exactly why we took an adjustable rate mortgage this summer in order to make sure we were prepared for when interest rates do eventually go down. So if you're on the fence of fixed versus variable or fixed versus adjustable, make sure you check out that video.